This week on The Roads We Roam. We're going to go to the visitor center. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right, we are at Gettysburg. We have to figure out how we're going to get to the visitor center. So we think this is going to take us to the visitor center. I think so. Either way, it's a pretty walk. Not a cloud in the sky. You know, it makes me think so. I wonder if they do offer shuttles because if you RV and you have limitations to walk. Yeah. How do you get up to the visitor center unless you drive up, drop someone off, and then go park? We found the visitor center! What a cool visitor center, huh? Gettysburg something museum. Look at how far back it goes. Yeah, because it's a museum as well. Main entrance. Leave backpacks and vehicles. Thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. Well, this is the time to come. All right. Ooh, look at this place, babe. This is legit. You want to go? No, I want to sit in the middle. So go down there. A little I'll follow bit. you. Dead center. Booyah. Dead center, babe. So they say in the cyclorama that you can use video, just no flag. Welcome to the Gettysburg Cyclorama. You're standing behind Union lines on Cemetery Ridge. The round tops can be seen highlighted to the south. To the west is Seminary Ridge and the Confederate lines. Please refrain from videotaping or taking flash photography. How was that, babe? It was very interesting. And now we know what we'll be looking at as we spend two hours doing the drive. Yeah. Have to watch the movies all the time. So guess what I did? Ooh, look at all those weapons right over there. Yes, 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 yes. I downloaded an app. You did. Um, Hold on, I gotta go get these uniforms. Look at that breastplate right there. Those script eye buttons in there. Infantry. Look how ornate Connecticut buttons are. <laughs> Leave it to the Connecticut freaks to go over the top. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I could go crazy in here with books that I'd never read. I'd buy them with great intent, but it just wouldn't happen. GBG. Find anything interesting, baby? That's cookbooks. Nice. They like possum and stuff like that? <laughs> oh, maybe, I didn't look at that. <laughs> Some of the recipes or the Union and Confederate cookbooks. Ooh. Well, maybe the Civil War recipes have both of them in there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That might be better. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Carried like this. What? Check out this hat Carrie found for me. Yes, yes, yes. New f- so cute. Oh, that is cool. I got a bullet too. Go ahead, Abraham. Oh my goodness. Almost ran Abraham Lincoln over as he was crossing the parking lot to say Abraham oh. No. Mr. President! Impressed. Mr. President! Restaurant. <laughs> we take up a lot of real estate when you're talking to Abe Lincoln. <laughs> okay, so we are going to visit Dick Winter's grave. He's one of my heroes. I know he'd probably be the first to say he wasn't a hero. The heroes were the ones that never came back, but uh, he's a personal uh, hero to me anyways.
wasn't aware of this, but Carrie read an article where the family of Dick Winters said that they would uh, like people to not just honor his grave, but more honor the other veterans in the cemetery, correct? Yes, and there's a lot of other veterans here from all different time periods. Yeah, you can see the flags, the American flags next to the gravestone. So we are going to do that. Jacob Rail. A veteran 1861 to 1865. That's the Civil War dates. You can see I got a cone in front of Boone. That's because a lot of people will come and pull right in front of Boone and a lot of times somebody will pull right behind them and then you're stuck. So I just put that cone one spot over from where I am and it gives me enough room to inch out. I keep this cone in a very handy spot. Uh, it's right inside the front door here. You can see I've got my gloves over here, and then the, hi Abby. I've got my gloves over here, and there's Billy too. <laughs> hi Billy, Billy, Billy. And then my uh, cone is right there. I don't know if I can get it in, right there behind the driver's seat. We're going to our first Blue Beacon truck wash. All right, so this is the view here. We've been waiting about a half an hour now, right, babe? Yeah, not too bad. To get into the Blue Beacon car wash, uh, Boone needs a wash. Hopefully, we'll be able to tape or video while we're taped. Boy, that shows you what era we're from. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to shoot video while we're uh, going through here, show you what it's all about. So what type of services do they offer? We get a wash, a brush, everything, and then rain x is what we've got. But they've got tire dressing and um, hand drying and stuff. I just want to get it washed. And the rain x will be good because, mostly because it'll take the bugs, or make the bugs easier to wash off the windows. So we'll see. That was pretty simple so far. Is it Oh, at least we didn't get yelled at when we pulled up. <laughs> what are, what you, are doing? you doing in here? <laughs> that was our biggest fear. That was the test time. To see if that yellow uh, light cap comes flying off. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you replaced that. Yeah. <laughs> Abby. Okay, so they'll pull you in, shut your engine off so you're not idling inside here. You go in and pay. Ours came up to 5610 because we got the rain x treatment as well. Um, but uh, then you come back in. You can either wait out there or you can come back in the rig. I think it's more comfortable in the rig. All right, well, we are at the Cracker Barrel where we're spending the night tonight. Super happy with Blue Diamond. Karen and I talked about it. Even though it was 56 bucks to get it done, I think this is something that we are going to do at least once a month. I don't think it'll cost us $56 the next time because I probably won't get the Rain X. It depends, I'll see how that works. If it works well, well then I'll get it. If not, I'll save myself some money and just get the regular car wash. But I gotta tell you, Blue Beacon, it's the way to go. We're at Cracker Barrel and uh, we wanted to bring the back end up level. And uh, so Carrie went out, pulled the leveling blocks out. I went to start the RV up and I'm like, wait a minute. I can't find the key. I'm thinking maybe it's because it's dark. So turn the lights on, realize the ignition key isn't here. What had happened when we went in to eat at Cracker Barrel, I left my keys on the table. And uh, while we were walking up to pay the cashier, guy runs up to me and goes, hey, you forgot your keys here. Well, somehow they must that ignition key must have fallen off. Long story short, uh, the manager here, Doris, had it and she went home, forgot to put it in the safe, it stayed in her shirt pocket, so they called her at home. She's gotta come all the way in because she doesn't uh, come back to work until Wednesday. But uh, thank God it was given to the girl that rang us out, because she's still working. She was the only one that knew anything about this key other than Doris. 
talked to three managers here. Nobody knew about it, but she did. And she goes, yeah, the key was given to me. He said, I, and she said, I gave it to Doris. So they called Doris and Doris is on her way back. I feel bad, but uh, we've got our key now. So I feel good about that. Lesson learned. What? I don't know. Get a spare key. Yeah. Well, that girl and I were talking <laughs> about that. And I told her I'm definitely going to go take care of that tomorrow. Lesson learned what? Yeah, well, I didn't know. <laughs> All kinds of lessons could have been drawn up from that. That's true. That's true. All right. <laughs>